Episode 5 Vidur A very warm welcome to all the listeners. This is your host Madhulika Rajahan and you are listening to the episodic version of the great epic of Mahabharat. Vidur was born from Niyoga between sage Vyasa and Parishrami, a handmaiden to the queens Ambika and Ambalika. Ambika and Ambalika were wives of King Vichitravira, the grandfather to Kauravas and Pandavas, and father of Dhritarashtra and Pandu. Barring Krishna, Vidur was most respected as an advisor by the Pandavas, whom he forwarded on various occasions of Duryodhana's plots to exterminate them, such as Duryodhana's plan to burn them alive in the Lakshagrai or the house of wax. Vidur was the incarnation of Dharmraj, which means the Lord of Truth, being born as a mortal due to the curse of the sage Mandhavya. There is an interesting story on how he got cursed to be born as a mortal. The sage Mandhavya, who had acquired strength of mind and knowledge of the scriptures, spent his days in penance and the practice of truth. He lived in a hermitage in the forest on the outskirts of the city. One day, while he was immersed in silent contemplation under the shade of a tree outside his hut of leaves, a band of robbers fled through the woods with officers of the king in hot pursuit. The fugitives entered the ashram thinking it would be a convenient place to hide themselves in. They placed their booty in a corner and hid themselves. The soldiers of the king came to the ashrama tracking their footsteps the commander of the soldiers asked mandavya who was wrapped in deep meditation in a tone of command did you see the robbers pass by where did they go reply at once so that we may give chance and capture them the sage who was absorbed in yoga remained silent the commander repeated the question insolently but the sage did not hear anything in the meantime some of the attendants entered the ashram and discovered the stolen goods lying there they reported this to their commander all of them went in and found the stolen goods and the robbers who were in hiding the commander thought now i know the reason why the brahmana pretended to be silent he is indeed the chief of these robbers he has inspired this robbery Then he ordered his soldiers to guard the place where the king and told him that the sage Mandavya had been caught with the stolen goods. The king was very angry at the audacity of the chief of thieves who had put the garb of a Brahmin sage. The better to deceive the world. Without pausing to verify the facts, he ordered the wicked criminal as he thought him to be impaled. The commander returned to the hermitage impaled Mandavya on a spear and had handed it over the stolen things to the king the virtuous sage though impaled on a spear did not die since he was in yoga when he was impaled he remained alive by the power of yoga sages who lived in other parts of the forest came to his hermitage and asked Mandavya how he came to be in this terrible pass Mandavya replied Whom should I blame? The servants of the king who protect the world have inflicted this punishment. The king was surprised and frightened when he heard that the impaled sage was still alive and that he was surrounded by other sages of the forest. He hastened to the forest with his attendants and at once ordered the sage to be taken down from the spear. Then he prostrated at his feet and prayed humbly to be forgiven for the offense. unwittingly committed mandavya was not angry with the king he went straight to dharma the divine dispenser of justice who was seated on his throne and asked him what crime have i committed to deserve this torture lord dharma who knew the great power of the sage replied in all humility o sage you have tortured birds and bees are you not aware of all these deeds good or bad however small inevitably produce their results good or evil mandavya was 
surprised at this reply of Lord Dharma and asked, When did I commit this offence? Lord Dharma replied, When you were a child. Mandavya then pronounced a curse on Dharma. This punishment, he said, you have decreed is far in excess of the deserts of a mistake committed by a child in ignorance. Be born, therefore, as a mortal in the world. Krishna respected Vidur for his devotion to people's welfare and his proficiency in every sphere of knowledge. Except the prince Vikarna, Vidur was the only one who protested against the humiliation of Draupadi in the Kaurava court. In that moment, Duryodhana viciously rebuked Vidur, calling him ungrateful. Dhritarashtra moved to rebuke Duryodhana for insulting Duryodhana's uncle. But remembering Vidur saying that a blind man cannot be king, held his tongue and instead reprimanded Duryodhana for insulting the Prime Minister. It is that incident that Vidur brought up years later when he served, served the ties with the Kurus and sided with Pandavas at the onset of the Kurukshetra war. Unlike Bhishma, Dronacharya, Kripacharya, Karna, all of them, Vidur did not have an obligation to Hastinapur or to Duryodhana, but to his family. Hearing Dhritarashtra not acknowledge his relationship, Vidur felt compelled to side with Dharma and the Pandavas. When Krishna visited Hastinapur as a peace emissary of the Pandavas, he shunned Duryodhana's offer to stay in the royal palace, preferring instead the home of Vidur, on account of him being the only neutral man in the Kauravas court. The reason Krishna stayed in Vidura's chamber for the night instead of Duryodhana's is due to the thoughts which were running through their heads it and the difference between them. Duryodhana's intention was to heave luxury upon Krishna and convince him to join the Kaurava's side. Sensing this intention, Krishna refused. Krishna knew the food that Vidur presented was presented with love and affection and with no ulterior motive. With this, we come to an end to today's episode on the great epic of Mahabharat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy and stay healthy always. Narayan Narayan